What's going on, Sooner Nation? Today, we got to talk about who's leaving Oklahoma, who could be potentially coming into Oklahoma, especially with the massive visitor list that we have. And we got to talk about the impact and why it's important for Oklahoma to land some of these kids. Before we do that, though, I want to hear from y'all. So make sure you're joining the discussion, jumping down in the comments below and giving me your guys' thoughts on whether or not you think Oklahoma can land any of these transfer portal prospects. But the Oklahoma Sooners over the past couple of days have gotten some news of guys that are leaving the portal. It's not necessarily things that have taken people by shock, except for the one today about Justin Harrington entering the transfer portal. If you guys remember last season before Harrington got hurt, he was playing that cheetah position and he was playing it very well. Additionally, you have lost Shane Witter in the transfer portal. You've lost tight end Hayden Bray, and you've also lost linebacker Connor Near. And this is all around Oklahoma trying to get down to that 85 scholarship limit, which I've been told really isn't a problem when they're bringing in some of these new guns. But Oklahoma has got some nice visitors set to come on campus this weekend, and they've got a couple transfer portal defensive linemen that I think we got to take a look at. Additionally, they've got a center coming on campus that I think Oklahoma leads for, and I think Oklahoma fans should be potentially looking for a commitment here in the next couple of days. We'll talk about that one here in a second. We got to start with these defensive linemen because we've talked about this being the area of need for Oklahoma and the trenches being extremely important when you're going into the SEC. So the first one that you saw into the portal that Oklahoma was immediately in on was Jermaine Lole. And he was at Arizona State for four years. Then he ended up at Louisville. Uh, he didn't play in 2021. And it, he only looks like he only played one game in 2022. So really, you can say this dude sat out for two seasons. So you're like, okay, he sat out for two seasons. He's only really played for four. He's only got one year. This is it. He'll be a six-year senior. But the one thing you note with Lole is the way he moves with his feet uh, and, and the upper body power, right? He's able to move those defenders. And this is a guy that you would expect is coming in. He's going to be a nose tackle for Oklahoma, like 310 pounds, 6'3". This is a guy that has collected 141 total tackles. He has 66 solos, 25 tackles for loss, 12 and a half sacks, and 10 pass breakups. Now, this is all, all of this is technically within four years of actual college ball. The other two years that he's played in college football, he hasn't actually played in those games. So it's really just four years of stats. Then the other defensive lineman that hit the portal, and this is one that if you guys have watched this show, you guys have watched Jay over at Unfair Sports, we've talked about this one for months. Like, not necessarily dropping the name per se, but saying, hey, like, if this person hits the portal, you're going to hear Oklahoma. Oklahoma will probably be the favorite coming out of it. And that was Demonic Williams, or um, I don't know how you say his first name, but he is going to be a junior this upcoming season. And he's played two seasons at TCU. And let me tell you, this dude's an absolute baller. In the two seasons he's played, he's played 26 total games. He's had 60 total tackles. He has 26 solos, four and a half sacks, nine and a half tackles for loss, and one forced fumble. And this is a guy that comes in. He's going to be available this year. He has another year of eligibility outside of that. So maybe if you can get him to stay for his senior year. But I would imagine Demonic Williams is coming in to really get developed this last year so that he can go be draft eligible. But just know... Williams does have two years of eligibility left on his counter. So Demonic Williams would be a guy you bring in, let's say Williams and Lole. We're talking about an elite defensive line because you're going to have Grayson Halton, Devon Sears, who, by the way, has apparently been playing really well in the spring. And this is a guy that I think on this defensive line is going to be able to help maybe play in the three T situation. Not sure, but then you've got David Stone, you've got Jaden Jackson, and you've got Dejon Terry. And this comes after the loss of losing Jacob Lacey to the medical retirement. So you get both of these guys, both of these prospects. We're talking about an elite 
defensive line, probably one of the best in the SEC and one of the best in college football. And remember, this is important because Oklahoma last year was number seven in tackles for loss. They were number 77 in sacks. And a lot of that was just because a lot of teams were playing max protect and the quarterbacks were getting the ball out of their hands really quickly. So it was hard for these edge defenders and the interior guys to be able to get to that quarterback and create higher sacks numbers, but they were getting the tackles for loss. They were getting in the backfield, wreaking that havoc. And also they were creating hurries, which is another thing. And that's not a statistic I pulled up on the two guys, which um, I'm sure I can get that for you guys if you absolutely want it. But being able to create those hurries is really important, too. Now, you did see another defensive lineman hit the portal at 6'3", 200, or 325 pounds out of UCLA, Jay Toya. And this is a guy that is going to be on campus for Texas. You imagine Texas is going to need to bolster up their interior defensive line. I have not heard a ton of stuff with Oklahoma here yet. So I would imagine Texas is probably going to be getting this kid. He has 66 total tackles, 38 solos, seven tackles for loss, two sat or yeah, two sacks. This is a guy that is an option though. If for some reason, uh, Texas does not land him. Now I do want to talk about an offensive lineman because this is, kind of been an area that I've seen you guys in the comments say Oklahoma needs to be able to go out there and get a player. And I would imagine Oklahoma is probably going to try to go get one or two offensive linemen in this portal cycle. But the one that I feel really good about, the one that's going to be on campus this weekend is Branson Hickman. It's 6'3", 294 pounds, big boy. Imagine Oklahoma gets him in here, probably get him right about that 300 range. Uh, this is a guy last year who had 435 snaps at the run block, 517 with the pass block, and 900, and so 952 total. He had a 79.8 offensive grade last year, which was fourth best for centers in the country. His pass block grade was 83.8, which was 15th best. And then his run block grade was uh, 77.3, which was 10th best in the country. So you bring in Branson Hickman, and let's say Oklahoma actually lands Hickman because I think they're in a really good spot there. He's probably your starting center going into fall camp and going into this season. And you're probably throwing out a mashup of Heath Ozida, Sexton, Weiwu, and then I would say either Tarquin or Spencer Brown. Remember, Spencer Brown is extremely athletic. It's just a matter of him being able to put it together on the field. So Hickman is an interesting option for Oklahoma. Definitely, I think their best option at center in the portal right now. And I think it's one we got to look at. But by no doubt, Oklahoma did lose a Justin Harrington to the portal. And you guys heard us talk about Reggie Powers yesterday in the video. So maybe Reggie Powers is pushing for a starting spot or pushing for a rotational cheetah spot. And Justin Harrington got one year left. He wants to make the most of it. So maybe he's able to go find himself a place to play. Um, I'm not sure what those minutes and rotations were looking like for Oklahoma, but remember we've had Justin Harrington on the show. So as I tweeted out to him earlier, just like, Hey, like go be great. We were so glad to have you here at Oklahoma. We were glad to have you here on the podcast and it's just business, right? He's going to go out he's going to go find himself school. He's going to go ball out. Uh, but Oklahoma that room is really deep, and it's almost a good problem to have, and you expect to have some attrition at some level. But guys, if you have not already and you've made it this far, make sure you go ahead and hit that like, you hit the subscribe button, and join the discussion and let me know what you guys think. Who does Oklahoma land in this portal cycle? Do they land both defensive linemen? Do they land Hickman? You guys let me know.